recording. All right. Welcome to Transforming with Jeremy and Ellie. We have a very specially, uh, very special Valentine's Day uh, show for you. Now, if you're new to Blab, we welcome you. Thank you so much for being here. For those of, uh, for those of you that have followed us week after week, uh, welcome back. We love it. And um, just as a reminder, the props on your screen are an awesome way to tell Blab that you're enjoying what we're doing and uh, and get us featured more. So keep those props coming. I love seeing that. Um, also to pose a formal question, do slash Q in the chat box to the right. Um, what this does is put it over on the left for us so that we can have those gathered and they don't just get lost in the jumble of the uh, chat box on the right. And so we will be doing some Q and A at the end. And then also um, as we're covering some topics throughout uh, today's session, we will uh, we'll pick and choose which questions we want to answer at the point <laughs> at, at that point. Exactly. Ellie just did it. So that is how to pose a formal question. All right. We are happy to be here. Ellie, take it away. Well, uh, guys, we have a very special guest, which happens to be a, a dear friend of mine uh, that I've met through the uh, fitness industry. And we became very, very good friends. She is one of the real people, folks. Not only is she extremely knowledgeable in um, what she does, helping people transform their lives. She's transformed her own life. Um, I don't know if she wants to tell us how old she is, but I'll let her decide that later on in the show. Um, most of us would probably lose big, big money trying to guess how old she is. And um, Laura is actually, God, she's got so many titles. I don't even know where to start. I'm, I'm not even going to start there. I'm just going to let you know that she is a, an, an author of a fantastic book, um, she focuses a, a lot on helping women, uh, although she helps a lot of guys, but she does focus on empowering women, and she's very involved in the woman empowerment movement, if you will, through fitness and through positive self-talk, et cetera. I just want to show real quick before we get into it, this is Laura's uh, book. This is my personal copy of Laura's book, Hot and Healthy Body. Uh, she's known as the Green Fit fitness goddess, uh, and she's also the founder of the Fit and Fabulous, Laura London's Fit and Fabulous Mom Contest, which I've had the honor and the pleasure of not only speaking at as a motivational speaker, but also have um, sat on the judging panel. This is a very unique uh, contest where Laura brings in women from all walks of life, from all levels of fitness to teach them that they can be proud of who they are and, you know, and their hard work that they're doing at the gym, at home, or whatever, whatever it may be. Today, Laura is bringing us the 10 steps for successful and lifelong transformation. Um, there's a lot of stuff to cover here. I don't know if we're going to be able to go into detail with every single step, Laura, oh, yeah. but why don't, why don't we you know, uh, say hello to everyone. And, you know, you can start off with, with your first step. I know everybody's uh, ready and willing to listen. All thank right. You. Well, first, thank you, Jeremy and Emily, for having me. I'm really, really excited to be here. This is my first time on Blab. So Ooh. I'm like watching all the things that are going on. <laughs> so <laughs> It can be very distracting like yeah. when, you're, when you're trying to focus on, on the topic. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you got people asking questions and chatting and liking and props. And it's it can be distracting, but you'll get used to it. That's very, very cool. Well, all right. So 10 steps to pre prepare for success. Blah, blah, successful transformation. And I think it's super important to go over these steps and we'll go over them really quickly. But most people, they decide they want to lose weight. They do a program, but they miss some really, really important things. And the first thing would be number one, changing your mindset. You have to change your mindset because all of us, I know we've all probably done so many different weight loss programs. And we think, why is this one going to work? You know, so we have to go in there with positivity. This is going to be it. This is what's going to work. We've got to. What are, what, are, what, are, what are a couple of the things that we have to do to change our mindset, Laura? Well, we have to get those negative thoughts that come into our head out. I call them slammers. You know, they, they come in like, oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm fat or this or that. All these negative things that go through our head. We've got to change them into positives, positive, positive. So that's one thing you can do. And I call that mind muscle mastery, because once you start changing those negative thoughts into positives, it starts to become a habit. Yeah. And then your mind and your body start to believe it. The next step, number two, I call be true to your word. Like do what you say you're going to do. You're important. Make that commitment to yourself. 
you, you wouldn't tell a friend you're going to do something and then not follow through with it. So follow exactly. through to yourself. Not only not only a friend, but Jeremy and I have spoken about this before in, in uh, previous blabs. You know, we make commitments to you know most of us work right mm -hmm. to make a living. Uh, many of us have a families, whether there's children or not. We whether we take care of a parent, a spouse, or what have you. You know, or even a pet. <laughs> For, I can tell you there's times that I don't want to walk. There you go. <laughs> I, you know, there's times I don't want to walk my dog. Yeah. You know, my dogs, you know, I just don't want to let them out. I don't want to go. I'm tired. But guess what? We have a responsibility, right? right. So I think this is the same way. If we, if we set our minds into having, um, you know, those commitments where we're like, well, I don't want to do it, but I have to because this is my responsibility. And, you know, who, who should we be more responsible for? The number one person that we should be responsible yeah. for. Yeah, it's us, right? Because so, nobody yes. else is going to do it for us. It's, it's all up top. Exactly. Yeah. It's amazing how, and this is very, very common. I mean, it's amazing how how uh, taking care of yourself sometimes can so easily be put on the back burner. Um, but yet we'd never, you know, if we if we made a doctor's appointment or an appointment with an attorney yes. or something, we would never miss that ever, right? right. <laughs> right? Absolutely. But yet, when it comes to having that self-respect and taking care of ourselves, it's so easy for some of us, especially those with the added responsibility of children yeah. and spouses and jobs and, and everything else to be like, oh, you no, know, I'll do it tomorrow or I'll put it off or whatever. Oh. And it, we have to be true to our word. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. All right, and now, it's so easy to do. You oh, know, yeah. not going to go to the gym, shoops, go to go to Target. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Number four would be um, goal setting. Like, well, we, we missed number, number three, three, Laura. I missed number three. Oh, yeah. P, number three, sorry. A positive mental attitude, PMA. So just starting off the day. Not to be, not to be confused with PMS, right? <laughs> PMS, PMS, <laughs> positive <laughs> mental attitude. I actually took okay. a course in college called PMA, positive mental attitude. But just going in with, you know, gratitude and being happy and knowing what you're doing for yourself is is all good it's uh it, you just it goes back to number one just changing that mindset just being positive all the time because we're going to go up and we're going to go down through this journey but it's just keeping going and keeping that positive mental attitude while there's, you're there's one one thing that you mentioned under positive mental attitude laura mm -hmm. you say look at what you're gaining not yeah. giving up by being healthy yeah. many of us look at you know getting healthy as a uh, almost as a negative right we look at the yeah. foods that we have to give up we look at exercise almost as a punishment but if we start looking at it in, in you know like you say looking what at what you're gaining and not giving yeah. up you know and listen folks it takes time to you know readjust our our mind and readjust these these yeah. thoughts that we've had for years and years if not decades or maybe all of our lives but again, everything starts, you know, one step at a time, right, Laura? One making, step at a time. You, you start making those small little changes and looking at the positive. That's that's excellent. Number three is excellent. Positive mental okay. attitude. Then we'll skip number three. <laughs> um, all right. And another big thing is a lot of people will postpone joy until they lose the weight. You know, they mm. won't buy nice clothing for themselves until they lose the weight or they won't go on a trip. They won't look for a boyfriend or a husband until they're the perfect weight. Don't postpone joy. You're going to, you are you no matter what you weigh. You're always going to be you and you should always be enjoying yourself and your life. I think that's huge. Great. All right. Number Absolutely. four, goal setting. We have to set goals. People who set goals know where they're going. They have an action plan. I think the, the first step is really finding your burning desire like why do you want to lose weight most people are like oh i just i want to lose 20 pounds i want to lose 30 pounds but why? why when you start asking why it becomes so much deeper right guys you you right oh yeah absolutely you know that, that's one of my that's one of my big talking points with my clients and and in programs i've created is and i call it find your why yep why are we doing this to begin with and and going back to the goal setting and also the um, you had said in in number uh, number three the positive mental attitude on what you're grateful for right if you can yeah. kind of mix these together in finding these things that you're grateful for 
focusing on the positives, you, I mean, you're we're wrapping a lot of these into the same thing. And, and then going through and envisioning what you want out of this is a huge, huge thing of why we're even doing this to begin with, begin with because yeah. not every day is going to be puppies and rainbows. No. You're going to have hard days. You're yeah. going <laughs> to, stress is going to come into your life. And what, what are you going to focus on if you don't have a proper mental image of what you're shooting for, what you're going for? That's, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I always Gary, Gary, Gary Willis is wise. He wants to look like you, um, Jeremy. <laughs> and he will get there. I, I, <laughs> Gary, uh, Gary is a hard worker. Totally um, solid, solid dude. Real, real guy. That's awesome. Jer Jeremy, you, I mean, Gary, you're wanting to look like Jeremy. I'm, I, I don't know you, but I'm starting to think that you have, uh, you know, questionable. Uh, I'm questioning oh, your job. Come on, man. come on. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Tens of thousands of followers can't be wrong, Ellie. Uh, you're right. You're right. I'm just, je I'm just jealous. I want to look like you too, Jeremy. You oh, know it. Ridiculous. We're all ridiculously good looking. That's hey, you know <laughs> right. You guys are funny. Oh, yes. God. Well, you know we have to be. That's all we have going for us, Laura. Yeah. Gotta have. So, you gotta have fun, guys. You gotta have fun. Right. That's part that's of my right. motto. Right. So part of, part of these setting goals, we you know finding our why and finding that burning desire. Um, Laura, you write here also, create and write your goals. People who write down goals are successful. Tell us about how important it is to write these goals down. Yeah, you can you can think your goals, you can say them, and then they kind of go away. But once you write them down, they be they become real. And once you start reading them every day, they become even more real. I always say, visit your goals every day make some small goals, small attainable goals. And like Ellie says, one step at a time, it's like moving up the rungs on a ladder. You're going to start getting some success and you're going to move higher and higher and higher to that goal. And I truly know if I did not write down my goals when I first started all this, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be here today. Yeah. That's how and how many people, are, how many people are going to remember their goals? 20 minutes past thinking exactly them, right? exactly just, it's not, i mean th you, we couldn't even remember our our, our grocery store items if we right. if we went to the grocery store without a list absolutely we and, the, and our goals our personal goals regardless of whether they're you know for relationships or business or or fitness or health <clears throat> these are so much more important than the items we're picking up at the grocery store right. so why are we not committing these to paper and i hope uh, Michael C. If you're, if Michael, if you're on, can you type in the message? Um, he joins us from time to time. But uh, if he's not on, listening to this right now, I'm going to personally shove this uh, replay down his throat because this is, <laughs> this is something that we've been talking about. Absolutely, commit it to paper. Yeah, commit it to paper. And you know what's really awesome is when you go back and you read those goals, and you're like, holy! I want to swear, holy crap! I did it. I accomplished those goals. Right. Oh, what a feeling is that? That's really huge. And then you can set new goals. Awesome. You know what? And I and I've been on on both ends. I've been um, I'm naturally a procrastinator. So and I've procrastinated writing down my goals many many times. Um, but I can tell you, having set goals in my mind and having written goals down on paper. It is night and day, folks. It really is. I mean, when you write it down, even if it's on a piece, you know, on a, on a, on a napkin, okay, you just write it down and have it somewhere. It is so different because you can actually, you know, even just scratch off that you got to that particular goal. And we're not talking about life goals. That's all you have to write down. It could be your weekly goals, right, right. Laura? It could be your daily goals. Sure. You know, um, it could be, you know, again, bringing, breaking it down again to that, to the, to the smallest mm -hmm. step in order for us to reach the furthest destiny is, you know, breaking it down and writing these, all of these little tiny goals down, including the big life yeah. goals, correct? Yes, and when you attach a, like it goes back again to that burning desire because you're when you write them down, you're attaching a feeling to those goals. Like you feel something when you read them and that's gonna fuel your burning desire and your why when you don't feel like going to the gym or eating healthy. There, Right. For yeah. Sure. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. If there, if there, if there isn't uh, some type of goal, and again, all of us have different goals. Maybe we do the same things to get to those goals, but they may be very different. Mm -hmm. But um, it, you know, when when we have something to reach for, we work so much harder. Also, you know, we work happier as well. Not just harder, but happier. I can tell you, when I was um, avidly running and training for marathons, um, 
if I didn't have a race in mind, I didn't really like the whole running thing was a little weird for me because, well, why am I running eight miles today? Yes. You know, well, it feels good for the first four maybe, but then after that, you have to think, well, I'm training for something. Right. And that just pushed me, pushed me over. I'm sure Jeremy, Laura has also been a competitor in, in, in bodybuilding. I'm sure you guys know how it is going into the gym. Working out is delicious, but how much better is it when you have a goal in mind that right. you have to be on stage if, in yeah. X amount of weeks? Yeah. If there was, if there wasn't that show date or that, you know, I've been in powerlifting as well. If there wasn't that show date or something coming up, there is no way that I would have put myself even mentally through what it took <laughs> to get there or to, you know, to, to strap 550 pounds on my back and squat up and down. I mean, that's just, sure. you'd never do that, right? right? Like <laughs> you, you've got to have, you've got to have something driving you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I had, I had a point where, you know, I had written down my goals and I had such a focus. And if we, if we go back, part of my story is that I had lost my dad uh, when I was nine months pregnant and I lost my brother. And I got into this whole fitness thing and I had these goals and they kept me going. They kept me so focused to not deal with the emotions of losing my dad and my brother. But when I didn't have any more goals, like I wasn't writing them down, my world crumbled. So goals are so, so important to keep us just focused and on track. Yeah. So guys, goals, write them down. Go write them down. Um, you know, <laughs> write, write, write them down. Yeah, like, no, I right mean, now. literally after this show is over, I, I would highly recommend you take a few minutes to yourself. And while it's still fresh in your mind, use some of these things that, uh, mm -hmm. that, that we're sharing with you mm -hmm. today and implement them. And something very, very simple for you to do is write down your goals. Um, you'll have this replay that you can watch tomorrow. And if you need to remind yourself of some of these 10 items, do that. But without a doubt, writing down your goals is a great first start. If you haven't done anything or if you just have, you know, like Laura said, oh, I just want to lose 30 pounds or I just want to lose what, 100 pounds. It doesn't matter. If that's where you're at right now, we need to get way more concise with what we're actually shooting for. And so after this show is over, write down your goals. That should be your homework for the day. For sure, for sure. And and speaking of writing down goals, your next step, uh, step five is journaling, journaling right, Laura? Journaling. So, so what's what's the difference between writing down the goals and journaling? Uh, for many, for me, I would say, oh, it's almost kind of the same thing, but no, it's not. When I tell people to journal, I, I I give them a a book, a specific journal book, and they write down their goals in it, and then they write down their eating, what they're eating every day. They write down what they're exercising, they're writing down how they're feeling. This is all for accountability. And this is one of the hardest things I actually find hard for clients to do and be consistent with for some reason. They're like, oh, I wrote it down and then I stopped. But it's so, so, so important because you can track your progress. You can see mm -hmm. what's going on. If you hit a plateau, you have this journal to go back to. You can see if you know something happened last Tuesday and you, 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 oh, you ate too much because you were emotional eating. You know, there's so many things to go with writing things down and journaling and your thoughts and your feelings, your successes, your struggles. And most people will skip that step. Journaling number five, very, very yeah. good. And uh, also a, a big part of, uh, I know Jeremy, you, you happen to do this a lot with your, with your clients. I do. I do. Um, for, for a couple of reasons. First of all, one, we have to know what we're taking in. I mean, especially when you're in a, a coach client relationship where I'm doing their nutrition, I'm, <clears throat> I, I give them some freedom in choosing the foods they want to eat, but we stick to macros and we stick to calories and we, okay. and we, you know, we work on portion sizes and this type of stuff. And, and as we move along and get kind of more specific and our, what we're doing gets more specific, there's no way that I could possibly adjust, um, you right. know, protein down, or up 10 grams or, you know, fats down 10 grams if we have no idea what we're taking in, right? It just, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I do, especially, especially for two reasons. One, to learn proper portion sizes because some of the people I work with, they're, they're, no you know, they have portion sizes. Yeah. And also so that it makes my job easier so that if I need to adjust things down or up, um, we know what you're taking in and we can do that. Right. <clears throat> also another thing, and I just put this in as a fun fact, there are actually numerous studies and they're all around the same percentage. Um, but 
they took two groups of people in the same weight loss journey, doing very, very similar, the same workouts, all of this stuff. The people that logged their foods lost 50% more fat than those that didn't. Wow. Simply, That's a lot. It is a lot. It's very substantial it. simply just by the fact of the accountability that it accountability. is. If you know you have to log it in and what goes in your mouth, you might be a little bit, <laughs> you know, I think the average person doesn't realize how many nibbles and bites and, oh, this, I know, right. I know I shouldn't have it, but just this mm -hmm. one time, just this one time happened three times today, you know, right. like, right. So, and that, uh, that adds up, especially like you're cooking dinner and you sample this and you sample that. You just don't realize what's going on. Yeah. Even just having through meals, people don't realize. And, and I've had this with, um, you know, with uh, my, my clients and, you know, I, I work mostly with people, you know, how to get into their heads, you know, or get out of their heads, really. But to really start with somebody that's 100, 200, 300 pounds overweight, we're like, OK, let's figure out first what it is that you're eating. So I asked them to for an entire week to write, yes. no judgments here, right, just right, right. don't try to, you just eat normally and write down what you eat. Yep. And when they look at it physically and they're looking at, at the, at what they'll, and we review it, it's like, oh my God, they know they're eating a lot, they but realize. they don't realize, you know, and it's so easy to make tweaks, especially at this level where somebody's just eating all kinds of stuff. And I've been there. Um, is you start making tweaks, tweaks where you're like, okay, no Doritos for this week. That's it. Everything else you can eat, you know. And all of a sudden, the following week, it's well, no soda, you know. And but you can still eat pizza and all this other stuff. All of a sudden, these little tweaks and they're dropping in weight simply from these tiny little tweaks. But we don't know these until we write them down and actually look at them on yeah. paper. Yeah, and, and I've had the exact same thing, Ellie, and I agree regardless of how you're using it, whether it's to track the little minute things you're taking in or just to give you a reality check of the, right. Oh yeah, you are consuming 6,000 calories a day <laughs> eating the way you're eating, you know? Um, it, but I, I've done the exact same thing of, Hey, let's not change. Let, I'm not going to tell you, you know, you can't have that cheeseburger, but you know, on week two, we go from the triple to the single yeah. cheeseburger and fries, you know, like it's it. We start to scale down just a little bit, and it makes these right. little but, small things make a huge, huge difference. Um, but believe it or not, though, that does make a it huge does. difference, oh, big, big time. I'm yeah, now, you guys I, too with women. It's almost sometimes the opposite. They don't eat enough, and they right. think they're eating many. enough. And I look, and I'm like, "You're not eating enough. You've got to eat weight, uh, eat weight, eat yeah, food to lose yeah. weight." Yeah. Right. You're starving themselves. Yeah. yeah I do want to, I, I do want to bring up, um, dots 617 said she doesn't journal her foods, but she does use my fitness pal. Now, um, I think that's a fantastic idea. I'm all for the digital era, the digital world where you can graph and chart and all of this stuff. Um, if you simply used a paper and pen journal to log foods, that's one way to do it. And that's totally fine if that's your deal. But in my opinion, and I'm open to others, Laura or Ellie, but um, using a tool, a free tool like MyFitnessPal or something like that, um, I still see that as very useful and yeah. and being able to see pre-made graphs and charts and 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 everything else. So dots, I in my opinion, again, I'm open to whatever, but in my opinion, you're still you're doing it. You're you know you're logging your foods. You have a solid idea of what you're taking in, and you're using a tool that gives you you know gives you access to look at your foods in different ways. I think it's fantastic, and MyFitnessPal is what I recommend my clients use as it is. So. Yep. No, I love my, I love my fitness pal. I don't, I don't particularly use it and, but I'm definitely uh, pro any of these type of things. I'm old school. I just, and I have a little ADD. So all of these, you know, the more technology, the less I pay attention to. So I'm, you know, old school, write it down. I have and I, it. even I, I walk into the gym with a, right, with, I walk into the gym with a little pad of how, and I journal my weights and, you know, what all my sets mm -hmm. and all my things. And I, and I write it down, mm -hmm. you know, other people put it in on their phones and stuff. I just find it to be quicker, but again, it's whatever works for you, well, right. Right. you know, there's no right or wrong. It's whatever works for you. You know, whatever you're going to do will work, Absolutely. but you have Absolutely. to do it. Exactly. You have to do the work. <laughs> all right. Number all right. Four, what's step number? What's step number six? Number six is making health a priority in your life. And I say, make this the year of you. You know, there, there are no quick fixes. We know that even though we, we all want a quick fix, weight loss is not a quick fix. So give yourself the gift of time, make yourself the priority and do what it takes to get it done. And don't 
So I have I have two questions for you here, Laura. Yep. So I got two questions for you here, Laura. Many people say you say make this the year of you. Mm -hmm. That's so selfish, though, right? No. Isn't oh my it selfish? gosh, no. Because especially, I know I'm here with two amazing guys, but I deal with a lot of women, and women like they put themselves way at the back of the bus. They take of the, care of the husband, the boyfriend, the kids, the house, the parents, everything. And if there's something left, maybe they'll do something for themselves. So, you know, it's not when we take care of ourselves, we function better, and everybody around us functions better. Life just runs a little bit smoother. It's not selfish. And I'm sure we've all worked with those people that <clears throat> have um, so many responsibilities on them, like you just said, or taking care of a parent or a, a, a whatever, whatever, maybe a child, special needs child, husband, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, all this stuff. And so many times that's the excuse they use for why they got in the situation they're in. Um, yeah. Maybe maybe it's all of the flexing photos that I post, but I work with like, uh, you know, now it's somewhere in the 80 percent female, uh, you know, female clients. And I get that same thing all the time. A lot of times they'll come to me. And and when you talk about, you know, you know, let's talk about your your past and your health and fitness background. It's a lot of, well, I focused on my family. I focused on, you know, taking care of my mom or I focused on, you know, whatever it may be. And sure enough, 40 pounds later and 10 years later, yeah, no, they're in right. this <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. They're in the situation they're in. And when you, when it really comes down to it, they've gotten into a situation, many of these women, where they cannot take care of their dependents to the best of their ability because yeah. they're not taking care of themselves. Yeah. yeah. And you kid yourself and feel like, oh, yeah, no, it's fine. I can stay up 20 hours a day and I can still do my job and I can still. No, you can't. <laughs> you It'll need come to crashing down. It'll you all will. come crashing down. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and then they wonder, and this goes for men too, but you wonder why, why, you know, why you find yourself crying yourself to sleep with a bag of Oreos in your lap because you're not taking care of, you got to take care of yourself first. And then you'll be so much more efficient at taking care of those around you. Right. I mean, put your oxygen mask on first yep. before assisting them yeah. the person right. next to you. And it's so, so true. It really, really is. It really is. I was I was looking. Uh, if you saw me looking away, I was I was looking in Laura's book, by the way. Um, and Laura, you got to tell us where where everybody can find your book. Sure, at lauralondonfitness.com or on Amazon. Perfect. What I was looking for, and I couldn't find any of the pictures in here. I, you can see Laura has a very svelte body on the cover of this uh, picture. We can't see her body on on this blab now. But if you go on her website. Uh, or you know, on her Facebook page, you will see that Laura was a very average. Um, yeah, we make fun listen, of Laura's my friend, so so I used to call. I, I call her. I was like, she was very homely, <laughs> very very homely. And then and then all of a sudden, she's doing these shots for like fitness magazines and stuff. And it's like, wow, you know, it's one of these people that you will look at and have these automatic judgments of like, oh my god, she's all about her and herself and her body, and she's such a snob. Absolutely, the complete opposite. Laura is a lovely mother of three, of three, right? Three, yeah, two, two girls and a boy, and uh, a lovely, lovely husband that she takes care of uh, as well. So I just want everybody to go check out her her website, her Facebook page, her Instagram, all her stuff. I've posted a link to her website. I posted a link to her website in the um, chat box to the right, so there is a direct link there for you. Yeah, Ellie used to like to make fun of me in my before photos because I was so I was dowdy looking. There's no what, frumpy, dowdy. Everything I yes. owned had a big flower on it. I didn't put makeup on my hair. I mean, I had you were not taking everywhere. care of yourself. You were, yeah, you were basically. I mean, honestly, it was uh, you know, and, and as people get to know you later on, you know, your the death of your father and and your brother and all of these things, and you know uh, that I'm I'm privy to, and that other people have read your book and stuff are, are privy to. Um, no, you weren't taking care of yourself, and you know, look at you now. Not only are you taking care of yourself and a beautiful family, but you're actually out there helping uh, so many so many people. You know, and and with that, let's continue helping folks mm -hmm. and tell them about step seven. Number seven, surround yourself with positive people. We need a support network when we're trying to make any type of change in our lives. Our family, people at the gym, your, your BFFs, everybody. You just need to have that support group. Don't feel like you have to do it alone. And I always tell people who who go to the gym and, and they're just starting out and they're like, gosh, you know, I don't belong here. Look at all these 
people there fit. They know what they're doing. The fit people are looking at you going, oh my gosh, you're here. That's awesome. Talk to them. They will love to help you and give you support. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the gym is, uh, that's a very, very common thing of this gym intimidation. People are so afraid of being intimidated by the gym. And really, for the most part, it's their own insecurities coming through. The gym is, there are really not that many intimidating people at the gym. Uh, but, but it's understandable. It but it's is. definitely understandable, Jeremy. Absolutely. It definitely is understandable. Absolutely. But what I try to tell my clients is, hey, look, just give it a shot. Just give it a shot and you will be surprised at how many people really are caring and really are open and really, you know, um, most, most people most, really, a are. lot of them were in and, the same shoes at once. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and sometimes if, even if they're, if they're having a hard time, even just taking that first step in the gym, sometimes you just got to put your headphones on and go in. That's, and that's and I mean. a lot of times it's like, you know, within a week or two, that place is going to feel like a second home and it's not even an issue anymore. Um, but when you start to get to know people and you start to, you know, you can see people if you, if you know, if you're just, if this is day one in your fitness journey, maybe the 270 pound shredded bodybuilder is not the person you want to go and become your BFF with right away. Maybe it's somebody that, you know, is going through the same struggles as you are right now. And you can visually see a lot of this going on. Mm -hmm. this, the woman working out by herself or the man working out by himself they're likely going through the exact same thing, right? And so you start to initiate a conversation with these people and you'll find it's not that intimidating of a yeah. place. It really is incredible because I, 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 I'm a social butterfly and, and I like to talk to people at the gym and stuff. And the people that I would have leaped, first of all, people don't know my story, obviously just by looking at me. Um, if we ever get into a conversation and that comes up, everybody kind of like freaks out. But the funny thing is that about 90% of the people that I speak to and I tell my story to, and they're like, oh my God, they'll pull out their phone and say, look at me five years ago or last year or whatever. And they're also an amazing success story and they're there. And it's like, you have no idea how many people have really started from the bottom. They're not these people that were working yeah. out since they were 13 years old yeah. and are, you know, uh, great bodybuilders through and, you know, these amazing physiques, et cetera, et cetera. And the people that are the best at what they do, especially in the bodybuilding world, are really humble people for the most part. Yeah. Again, like anywhere else in the world, you got jerks in any type of place, mm -hmm. right? right. Even, 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 in, even in religious institutions, you got jerks, right? right? <laughs> so, um, but for the most part, People are helpful. There really is, you know, the intimidation only really comes from within us because you know, we may not know the machines. We may not know, you know, how to do a particular exercise. Ask. Yeah. You know, that's, sure. that's what they have staff there for. You don't even have to hire them. Um, liability, they have to teach you how to use okay. machines. Yeah. Period. So, um, you know, that's definitely a good step is just going and ask it. And once you and once you're there, I can tell you just the energy of the gym, the energy of other people going towards that same goal that, that you have or similar um, just drives you to do even better. Going back to step one, changing that mindset, change your mindset about the gym. Right. But I have a feeling that all these steps are going to come together at the together. end. They're all going to be but yes. I want to tell you guys, like when I first started this journey. I, I never played a sport in my life. My brother had hemophilia, a rare blood disease growing up. So if he cut himself, his blood didn't clot. We played no sports in my house. We didn't even watch sports on TV. I am sports illiterate. So when I decided to do this thing, I, I feel this. I went to the gym and I'm like, what do I do? You know, so I can so relate to those people who I, but I went in and I had a plan and yeah. I wrote down my goals. And I knew what I was gonna, you know. So it all, it all tight, tight. Look, looks like it looks like it worked out. Yeah, it did. It did. It's yeah, good. All right. Good. Eight. Seven. Yes. Eight. Step eight. What was seven? Did I miss seven? Seven. Seven, seven was surround yourself with positive people. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Number. Build a support network. Yeah, that support network. Yep, Number eight right. is don't give in to excuses. We're all always going to have excuses all the time but it's how we choose to deal with the things that pop up in our life. You know, it's so easy to say, oh, I'm just not gonna exercise or I'm just gonna eat the whole cake, but it's, we have to start, we have to start changing what we're doing and not just give into those excuses all the time because you're not gonna get to where you're going. 
So right. change how you're dealing with them. Stop the all or nothing thinking. This is a big one. Right. People are like, well, I fell off the wagon. I'll start again on Monday, you know, or Monday turns into Wednesday then Friday. And then, you know, a year later, or they think they have to be perfect on a plan. This one kills me. There is no perfect. Nobody no does anything perfectly. Just pick right back up at your next meal, your next workout, whatever it is. Right. Don't start and stop and start and stop. It's the people who are consistent and follow through and keep going. Those are the people who are successful. Yeah. I guess consistency is a very important word here. Huge. And and uh, and it seems that it comes up in every single blob that we have. It really is. Um, so if, if there's one word, you know, if, if you haven't picked up anything tonight other than that, consistency. And it doesn't matter how small it is what you're doing, make it consistent. Yeah. And you will see you will see that uh, you will see that grow. Um, step number nine here it says stop s stop starting and stop. Yeah, I kind of jump kind of mix those two together, but yeah, just yeah, yeah, like we just said, consistency. Keep going, keep going. That's that's the true. My dog's moving here. That's the true thing that's going to get you to where you want to go. You know, people are like, oh, what's that new cabbage soup diet or what raspberry right. ketones or this? And they're like, squirrel, squirrel. They keep moving. <laughs> they don't stay with anything long enough to get the results. I tell people they go maybe a week, two weeks. Oh, it's not happening fast enough. I'm not seeing changes. Oh, yeah. Changes are happening inside your body. You can't see them. But if you keep going, you're going to see them. But most people give up right before their bodies were going to start changing. And they're like, Vroom, they go to something else. So, Laura, tell us, for instance, you know, because a, a lot of people think that if they're doing something consistently for two weeks, they should be seeing changes. We know that this is not true. No. It takes a lot more and it depends on who you are and what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Two weeks is definitely not enough. Yeah. But give us a, a, a good idea of what the right time frame is of consistent action to see some changes. I always say three months is a real good time frame to make some really good changes, but that's with a hundred percent commitment. That's not with, you know, 20% here, 40% there. It's really right. doing these steps that we're saying, the burning desire, the why, the goals, you're exercising, eating healthy and just keep going. You, yeah. So three months, you know, six months, really great. But three months, you can make some really, really nice changes, establish new healthy habits that are going to last you a lifetime because that's what you need. It's, it's for life. You don't want to yeah. lose the weight and gain it back. Right. So, Laura, we, we have we have here uh, Benedict. Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume it's Benedict Rodriguez. The whole name doesn't come up. But uh, and he didn't pose a a, a, um, a formal question, but I, I want to address this. He says I'm not trying to lose weight, just gain more muscle. Will will this stream help? Meaning what we're talking about. So we, we are talking about weight loss, uh, or we have mentioned weight loss. But all of these steps absolutely work towards any fitness goal, um, especially gaining muscle or, or building muscle. You know, training in in the gym. Jeremy disappeared on us, but we will continue going here. Um, so. Let's let's talk a little bit about, you know, all of these different steps as far as, you know, those three months, those 12 weeks that you speak about that we need to mm -hmm. actually see changes. Mm -hmm. Somebody that has a particular training plan, lifting weights, you know, resistance mm -hmm. training, mm -hmm. will they also see a change in three months? Yeah, they're good. You know what? I always say you have to go with the field test. Feel what's going on in their body. A lot of people will judge if they're losing weight by that number on the scale. Kick that scale to the curb, people. It's not. I sure have. Yeah, exactly. So you know, yes, you're going to you're going to feel changes. What happens first? The first thing that happens is things start to change inside your body that you can't see. The second thing that happens is you'll start to feel things getting tighter. And the third thing that happens is you start to lose the weight. But it's it's like it happens one step at a time. It doesn't happen right here. You have to keep going for that that uh, time frame to see those results. And, and muscle, muscle growth, for instance, mu muscle growth, and I know I'm putting you on the spot because this is a, a topic for an entire other hour, really, is muscle growth. But in, in a nutshell, um, 
you know, how how easy or how difficult is it to put on muscle? Okay. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of different variables, age, sex. Yeah. You know, what it really, I, pers my personal feeling is it comes down to what body type you have and what type of exercising you're doing. Because we have different body types, endomorph, ectomorph, mesomorph. Some body types put on muscle easier. Some have a lot harder time putting it on. So that's when a fitness professional really comes into play and can tell you how many reps you need to do, what weight you need to do, what, how many carbohydrates you should or shouldn't be eating. So yes, that's a, that's a whole other blab in itself, but yes, right. you definitely can put on muscle in three months time for sure. Excellent. So now we're getting towards the end of our blab here mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about step number 10, the 10th the, uh, and final step of how to successfully transform uh, uh, for a long life, yeah. long life, a lifelong transformation. Yeah. Um, so what's that 10th step, Laura? The 10th step is to enjoy the journey. Rome wasn't uh -huh. built in a day, but it's still standing. It's the things that you're going to learn about yourself through this whole journey that are going to be lifelong lessons for you. And, you know, again, it, the quick fix doesn't work. So you celebrate, I call them the, the small victories, the non-scale victories, you know, oh, I, I ate well today, or I enjoyed, I ate an apple for the first time, or, you know, I can get my shirt on and it's not, you know, pulling over here, or I could walk down the stairs or up the stairs and not be out of breath. Those are the tiny, tiny things that we need to see, not is the number on the scale changing. So I- Right, the number, so, so many of us, you know, and including myself for such a long time, um, you know where I come from and psychologically the scale, you know, and, and I'll be honest with you, there, there's, there's still times that it, it lingers and I'm about to step on the scale to see what I weigh. I'm like, I don't care. My clothes still fits the same, and I like the way I look in the mirror. What do I care what I weigh? Right. It really doesn't matter. I mean, I weighed myself the other day uh, a few weeks ago because I had a, uh, my yearly physical at the doctor, and I'm at the highest weight I've been since my, um, I don't know, since I got to my goal weight, if you will, right? But I've also put on a lot of muscle. Again, I'm not a big right. muscular guy, right? But I mean, I can definitely feel it. I measure myself and I see a, a very, very big difference in, in, my, in my body type. And hey, I like the way I look. I still can go buy clothes and feel good in it and not. And that to me is, um, but it took me a long, long time not to get on that scale. And my wife is, is uh, you know, she's witness to this. She hated it because I would get so frustrated that I would get on and I'd be like, oh my God, I weigh X amount. And she's like, you look phenomenal. What does it matter with you? I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm three pounds over where I should be. She's like, you're sick in the head. And you know what? It is a little bit of a sickness. It, it just you plays know, uh, mind games. The scale plays mind games. Yeah, it does. So, you know, at the, at the beginning, the scale is a great tool to guide us and to, and to give us, you know, once a week or once every two weeks to let us know that we're, we're doing okay. But once we get to a particular part of our lives, we got to get rid of, you know, the scale is really not the gauge. No, and that's, a, that's you just said it. It's one of the tools in the toolbox. We have the right. scale. We have measurements. We have how our clothes fit. We have how we feel. Oh, my gosh, people, you can feel good and lose weight. You don't have to get on the scale. You know, there's run, so run many things. Run it. Running Fitness here says, I can see my feet. I, you can see yes. your feet. Woo! Awesome. That's right. You know what? <laughs> that, you know, I, I, I laugh and smile at that because uh, I am, um, I remember when I was able to see my feet again for the first time, just standing up straight. I'm like, you know, that's a, that's a big deal. That really is a big deal. So uh, that's a, a huge non-scale victory as well. Um, yep. Let me see here. There's uh, Gary Willis has a question for us. Um, any comments on Bill Phillips body for life program? I particularly have an opinion on it. Uh, it's a positive one. Laura, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, oh, Bill Phillips familiar? body for life. My, this part of my story, I was grocery shopping with my three little kids, spit up everywhere, never played a sport in my life. 
I picked up a magazine in the grocery store. It was all these before and after transformations. And I'm like, I had never seen anything like that before. And it was the Bill Phillips transformation. I'm like, I'm going to do that. I don't know what possessed me, why I thought I could do something like that, not knowing anything about exercise or working out. And I did the Body for Life program. And that really is, is an awesome program. Welcome back, Jeremy. Thank you. I uh, don't know what happened there, but uh, my computer completely froze and then uh, was having some issues restarting. But it came up, so I'm here. Sorry. You're, you're, you're back. So well, we, we, were, we did just fine without you. Um, we missed you. We were uh, uh, just getting back to what we were speaking about now. Gary uh, Willis posed a question about any comments on Bill Phillips' Body for Life program. And Laura told us a little bit about her experience with the uh, Bill Phillips' Body for Life program. I also have an experience with a Bill Phillips for um, Body for Life program. When I first started out, uh, you know, many of you know that I just simply started walking 15 minutes a day, which increased to 20 minutes a day, which increased to 25 minutes a day. When I finally got into the gym, I was living in a condo that had its own gym at the time. Um, I said, you know what? I'm going to go start lifting weights. I remember some weightlifting stuff from high school or that weight training class, et cetera. But I, re I really didn't know much about it. Um, I don't know how I found this book. And like Laura, I saw these transformational pictures and I said, this is bullshit crap. <laughs> okay. This is, I'm like, there's no way that people are transforming like this. Absolutely no way, whatever. But I started reading it and I was like, you know what? There's some, there's, it's telling you how to work out. It, I found out about high intensity interval training for the first time. I didn't even know what that was. Yep. That's what I, that's the biggest thing that I learned from Bill Phillips was hit yep. high intensity interval training. That's when my weight loss just started plummeting because I started going 20 minutes every other day. Besides my regular workout, I was doing 20 minutes every other day of really hardcore hit on the elliptical. Mm -hmm. And it was from his book. And I didn't follow it to a T because I wasn't following the diet and I wasn't following the weightlifting exactly how he was, but I was following his um, exercises on there. So I wasn't following exactly how he said it, um, but I was following, I was like, oh, okay, so bench press, I'm going to do bench press and then I'm going to do, you know, uh, tricep pull downs or what have you. I, I was lost. So it was a really great guide um, for me. Um, Jeremy, do you have an opinion on it? Are you familiar with Bill Phillips' book? Uh, I'm familiar. I, you know, there, there are some key points that he makes in his book that aren't exactly, in my opinion, something that he created, but something that, you know, it's, uh, it's something that a lot of coaches and trainers out there use. And yeah, there's, there is value if you take it, um, <clears throat> depending on who you are and what your needs are at this point in your journey, something like body for life can be a very inexpensive guide in the right direction, or it, you know, it can be just yet another investment where you feel bad because you've quote unquote failed. Um, we all have, you know, we all have, um, these certain times in our life where maybe we need, maybe we do need more accountability. Maybe we need more guidance. Maybe we need to, you know, and so, um, it's, I'm not saying that anything in there is absolutely like horrible throw it in the garbage. All I know is I went to the gym with my shirt down to my knees and then start ripping it off. And people are like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know. I'm exercising. I'm eating well. I don't know. It was working. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I was consistent. <laughs> so just to recap, I'm, I want to read. Um, we're, we're getting towards the top of the hour here. So I want to read Laura's um, 10 steps. And we're just going to recap them really, really quickly. Um, and we're going to go in and take some questions. So step number one is change your mindset. Okay. Uh, basically ditch the se uh, negative self-talk. Step two is be true to your word. Decide, commit, and keep promise to yourself, just like you would a best friend or a family member or a boss or, um, or you know, a client, an appointment, what, what have you. You know, finish what you start. Uh, step three is PMA, not to be confused with PMS. It's positive mental attitude. You know, start the day with gratitude. Look at what you're gaining and not giving up on this journey. Step number four, one of the most important ones here, is setting goals creating your why, why, why do you want to do this? The real reasons you want to do this, you know, attach feelings to these goals. Um, step number five is <laughs> journaling, write down your why. That's right. Journaling uh, for accountability, journal, journal, journal. You know, it's a little bit of a pain in the, in the butt. Um, it, for me, it is at least, but it has been very, very helpful for, um, 
many, many people, including uh, all three of us, which are on your screen right now. Um, step number six, making health a priority in your life. We make so many things a priority, you know, work, um, children. And guess what? These are all priorities. Our families are priorities. Our, our, our businesses, our work is priority. Our, um, you know, I, I can't even think of anything else. Maybe a particular hobby is a prior priority. But our health, without our health, none of those priorities are, um, are we able to take care of those priorities. So let's make us the number one priority. Uh, step, step number seven, surround yourself with positive people. Build a support network. Those of you on here, you're on the right track. You're surrounding yourself with positive people. Jeremy, myself, Laura, okay, and all the other guests that we have here. All of the people that join us, that ask questions, that put comments. These are all people that we all have the same mindset. We're all here. Everything we speak about here is positivity, and it's to empower each other. So we're definitely on the, on the right step there. Uh, step number eight, don't give in to excuses. Man, you know, that's so easy to do. You know, excuses, we all have excuses. Um, if you need excuses, call me up because I've got a book full of them, <laughs> all right? Um, but I've also learned how to call BS on all of those excuses. Um, step number nine, stop starting and stopping. So that whole, you know, jumping in, you know, I've said it before, the all or nothing thinking. Stop the all or nothing. Do something. Take those, you know, just take, Laura writes here, just take action steps every day to move closer to your goal. It's that simple. One little tiny step. One little tiny step. And you'll get closer to your goal. Whether it is whether it is that you want to lose weight, gain weight, gain muscle, uh, run, you know, a 5K or an Ironman. It is all the same. Take that one step towards whatever goal it is. And step number 10 is enjoy the journey. Enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy, you know, celebrate, you know, in the case of weight loss, non-scale victories, you know, slow and steady, it wins the race. Just enjoy it. Enjoy what you're doing, whatever it may be, whether it's just walking with your dog for, you know, 15 minutes a day because that's how you're starting out, whether it's going to the gym and lifting crazy amount of weight and spending an hour and a half there or whether it's you know rowing whatever it may be enjoy it be in the moment and enjoy it so those are the 10 steps from uh, our our uh fitness guru laura london i want to remind you again uh, you can pick up her book hot and healthy body she has a bunch of great information here and, and i'm trying to find some pictures of her doing some yeah the book is not stuff. only a book is not only about fitness and weight loss. It's so much more than that. It's how your body works at the cellular level. And they talk right. about digestion and hormones and the elimination diet and all sorts of things. Because I really want to give people the gift of knowledge. My true mission and passion is to, after having lost my dad and my brother, I don't want to see people get sick at all and i want them to be able to prevent it so that's, that's awesome. truly what my whole mission and purpose here is that's great. thank thank you so much laura so um before we we close out today's show um we want to take up some more questions so uh jeremy if you want to answer uh some of the questions uh i sure yeah. gary willis uh he tried he did q u e slash <laughs> it's slash q um but almond milk or coconut milk uh, really, I mean, it's going to depend on what your goals are, Gary, but for you, knowing your goals, having been your coach, um, I think if you're going to have to choose between one of those, I would go with almond milk. Coconut milk is going to be very, very nutrient dense, uh, especially the whole coconut milk is like very nutrient dense. You can get light coconut milk, but you're still going to get a ton of, uh, you know, calories in there. If you're looking to just mix it in your shakes or whatever else for you personally, I would recommend the, uh, the plain almond milk. Um, but again, it all depends on what you're going for. Um, coconut is a is a good thing. So uh, I'm not I'm not, <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying coconut's a bad thing. But uh, for your goals, knowing your goals and what we've set you up on, uh, almond milk is going to be the way to go. Um, so Scott uh, Melito is saying how to keep motivated. You know, Scott, um, if you've if you've watched the whole blab, we've covered a lot of different things that are going to tie into keeping and maintaining that motivation. And some of those are 
um, determining why you're doing this. What are your goals, right? Sometimes our motivation is lacking simply because we don't know what we're going after. Right. Um, and so writing that stuff down, determining your why, determining what you're actually, you know, envision yourself in that in product, right? Like, what are we doing this for? Why are we working so hard? Sometimes that's why we fall apart. Where if we if we can deter, you know, determine why are we doing this and, and envision what we want to see from our hard work, that right there can be can really make or break that motivation and, and or make that motivation really keep you motivated. You know, and I've also recommended for my clients all the time is find a way to remind yourself of your goals every single morning, whether it's sticky notes on the bathroom mirror, because that's likely the first thing, you know, bathroom or bathroom mirror, likely the first place you're going to see in the morning. And, you know, or, or dream boards or dream journals or setting the background to your phone or whatever it may be for you is going to be it for you. But find something yeah. that reminds yourself of your goals every single day so that you start your day with that positive mindset. Another thing that we didn't really cover here, but I'm big on is a morning routine is starting your day. I recommend even if you have to get up 15, you know, 10 or 15 minutes early before you normally do to do some of the things that Laura even suggested. Write, write down your goals. I write down my goals every single morning. Many times they're the same exact thing that I wrote down the day before, but you know what? It puts it in the forefront of my mind and, and commits it to pen and paper. This is pen and paper here that I do it. And then I also write down what I'm grateful for that day. And a lot of times that could be something that happened the day before or an opportunity that's going to happen that day or something that's, on, you know, that, that's happening in my life. The things that I'm most grateful for, I write down at least three, four things that I'm grateful for. <clears throat> And then I also write down what I am going to, without a doubt, accomplish that day prior to going to bed. Yeah. And it's doing these three simple things, which really, if you're pressed, if you're that pressed for time, can only take five minutes or less. But it's starting my day off on the best foot forward. It is literally, it's positive. You're, you know, it's reminding yourself of your goals, reminding yourself what you're grateful for. Not all the BS that's in your life, not all right. the crap, not the crazy uncle or the relationship issues. It's what you're grateful for. And then reminding yourself what you are going to accomplish that day, no matter what. It, it Do that consistently, tying into exactly what Laura has told, you know, all the 10 steps, so that many of these tie exactly in. You'll right. find that your days are better your attitude is better and you get more accomplished. Yes. It's, it's really and that's big really thing. the way to keep yes. motivated. It's one of, one, of the, one of the key ways to keep motivated. Um, another way to keep motivated is for you guys to keep joining us here every Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Pacific. I want to thank Laura London, our special guest today, for really sharing a lot of her knowledge and yeah. her energy with us. Please make sure to follow her on Laura London Fitness. Um, she is all over social media, websites. She is all over speaking, and, and, and she's got a lot more information. Make sure to pick up her book as well. And don't forget, next week we have a very, very special guest again. His name is Drew Manning, and he is the author of Fit to Fat to Fit. Uh, and the, uh, I believe the creator, uh, definitely his show on A&E uh, by the same name, uh, Fit to Fat to Fit. Uh, and he's going to join us here and tell us what it's like to go from being super uber fit to purposely gaining over 80 pounds to see what it feels like to be overweight and then lose the weight in order so that he can be able to be more helpful to his clients. So Drew will be here with us next week. Uh, until then, I want to thank you again for joining Jeremy and I. Laura, thank you again for being on Thanks with us. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, our, Thanks, our pleasure. And uh, until then, peace. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Happy Valentine's Day. Yes. Bye-bye. <laughs>